Today we are kit building our very own ukulele. Now we're going to try and model it on Hokusai's Great Wave. I'm no artist, but let's get into it and see what happens. Okay, here we are in the middle of my ukulele kit building series. And we've got my attempt, my very basic attempt, at Hokusai's Great Wave, the uh, the great Japanese woodblock printer from the early 19th century. And um, I did go back to this a couple of times um, after the end of the last video, just to add some more white uh, wash on the waves there. Uh, I kept looking at it thinking it just needs a little bit more here and a little bit more there. So we've got quite a bit uh, extra around the bottom. Uh, I thicken that out a little bit, a lot more foam over the top of the wave. I, I wanted to just uh, change the shape a little bit of the, uh, the the crest of the wave there. And I've also overlapped the side on both sides, uh, which I quite like. I wonder whether I should have done more and gone, in fact, right round the band there, but that was going to get complicated. I would have had to put the masking tape back on. So I've decided to go with it like that. I'm quite happy with it. All these things, you always think, oh, I could have done it slightly differently. But I think I've got to a point now where I definitely need to stop. So that's the body, and I'm really actually happy with that. I also added Mount Fuji in the background, because Hokusai's Great Wave uh, does have Mount Fuji in the background. And I really like the way I've got the, the wave almost breaking over Mount Fuji there, uh, which is actually what he achieves in his version as well. Now, Hokusai does have a couple of boats in his. I was never going to get that creative. Um, I've also added a, li a little bit of foam to the neck, to the sort of green wave I'd done on the neck. And I think that's really uh, effective. I'm really pleased with that. So actually, given the limitations of my artistic abilities, I'm actually really pleased with that. I think that's come out really well. So today's job is to add some varnish because I am very worried that, um, you know, if you if you just normally play, your hands get a, can get a little bit greasy, can get a little bit clammy. Um, just holding the instrument so I am worried that that might come off in my hands some of the paint might get a bit damp so I do want to put at least one layer of varnish on it I might do a second layer we'll see how it goes uh, if I do a second layer I'll do that off camera um, I am a bit worried about the varnish and what it's going to look like we're going to start with the neck of the uh, of the ukulele and uh, varnish that first so we've as, as we've done with the paint we're painting it and then varnishing it all before we try and put it together I think that's obviously the uh, the obvious way to do it so here we go, it does say apply with a wet brush, and um, so let's see how we get on with it. Cue the music, maybe, hang on, I might just test it first. So I've got my damp brush over here, just make sure it's not too wet. Dip that in the varnish, and here we go. And straight away I get a hair. Good, that's good. <laughs> Right, we'll get rid of that hair. In fact, straight away, I've got multiple hairs in there. That was a really bad stroke. First stroke, and I've got multiple hairs in the varnish. Good. Right, I just need to get rid of those. So I don't want black hairs all over it. Right, that's actually gone on really fine, apart from the hairs. Um, hopefully we won't have too many more hairs coming off. Uh, cue the music, let's see what happens. Okay, I'm actually going to switch brushes because um, that's a bit of a disaster. <laughs> that's just that I'm getting so many hairs off that brush. We're going to abandon that brush. 
and I'm going to go and find another paintbrush. So I'll be back in one moment. Okay, I think that'll do. Just very carefully. How we got the body now? So I am a bit concerned about the hairs. But we will see how delicately and carefully we can do it. Certainly it's not having an effect on the colour, so that's good. It's not spoiling the colouring or the texture in any way. So that's good. My concern now is just for hairs. So I'm trying to do it in as few strokes as I can. So trying to follow the curve of the wave so it just looks natural. Doesn't look like it's been painted all over with streaks of varnish left and right. You sort of want to follow the natural curve of the painting. I think we're done. So, there we go. Right, I'll leave that to dry and uh, we're good to go. Thanks for watching.